Friends, welcome to worship today. We look forward to the day we'll be able to gather again in person, but I thought I'd refresh your memory of walking into the church and beginning for worship. Bless you as you worship with me today.
friends in Christ, let's take a deep breath as we begin our worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let's say the words of the Gloria on your screen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us attend now to Joanne's reading of portions of the letter of James. A reading from the letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain and for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. When you go to buy some crackers to go with your cheese, have you ever noticed that you can get low sodium varieties? Or those labeled saying less salt? Have you ever accidentally brought home a box of unsalted saltines? Lunch bag let down there. To me, they just don't taste very appealing. Or how about a can of low sodium Campbell's chicken noodle soup? Have you ever tried it? It's just my opinion, but I don't really care for it. And if your doctor has consulted you to lower the salt in your diet, I encourage you to do so, and you might just have to get used to the lack of flavor. I only know of one person the doctors have ever told to put more salt in her diet. So we could probably, all of us, do with a bit less salt in our diets. So, less salt in our mouths, say the heart doctors, but more salt in our souls, says the good physician. Jesus tells the church through the ages, have salt in yourself, be salty, be a salty character. But what exactly does that mean? We are going to begin by contrasting how this phrase is currently used in an informal way and how it is used in scripture. The psychology website psychreal.com states that the meaning of salty personality is individuals who are unpleasant or easily irritated. Because of their bad tempers, people usually don't like spending time with salty individuals. The dictionary Merriam-Webster defines the informal use of salty as feeling or showing resentment towards a person or situation. And they give a couple of examples. I completely forgot about our date and left my girlfriend waiting at the restaurant for over an hour. Now she's all salty. Another example, they made me shave my beard and cover up my tattoos, which I was a little bit salty about. Isn't it interesting how language changes? I'm more familiar with salty meaning an earthy or a gruff person, perhaps a little rough and to the point. But is this what Jesus means when he tells us to be salty, to be gruff, to be easily irritated, to be resentful? No, in fact, the opposite. 
Last week, we heard about how the disciples were examples of those displaying earthly, devilish wisdom. Remember, they were arguing with one another about who was greatest. Today, we see them being resentful. The disciples come to Jesus upset because they see a preacher casting out demons in Jesus' name. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Setting people free from their bondages, addictions, delusions, and internal strife. Isn't that a good thing? Why are the disciples upset then? They tell Jesus, we tried to get him to cut it out, Lord, because he was not following us. The disciples were not upset that the ancient exorcist had gifts in Jesus' name. They were upset because the exorcist was not one of them. He was a powerful Jesus preacher, but was outside their group, and they resented it. So Jesus corrects them. If people preach in my name and are outside your group, that's okay, because whoever is not against us is actually for us. Salty souls embrace diverse allies as associates, colleagues, and helpers. I am deeply grateful that our Anglican Church has this broad-minded acceptance of other churches and ministries that may not be Anglican, but who do good work in Jesus' name. I am grateful that our St. Philip's congregation has a gracious spirit and can recognize the spirit of Jesus at work in other ministries that differ from our own. I think specifically of Toronto Urban Native Ministry, which though a partnership of our Anglican Church and the United Church, do work with street people very different from our ministry here in the suburbs. So far, from the Walkathon, we've raised around $4,000 for their ministry. And remember in years past how we have supported Camp Grundy, who does work with First Nations children, and the Water Provision Ministry for Pekanjikum. Salty Christians lay down their partisanship, their denominational loyalties, for a far larger and broader loyalty to the multifaceted body of Christ. I received a very nice gift for Father's Day this year. It's a collection of 10 different kinds of salt. They all have saltiness because they're all made of sodium chloride, of course, but they all have different trace elements. They are all influenced by their terroir. There's pink Himalayan salt, Rocky Mountain salt, Peruvian Inca salt. They are all salty but have different flavors. Salty Christians come in different flavors too, but they are our allies. I would push the embrace of our salty allies even farther beyond interdenominationalism, even to multi-faith. Let us practice hospitality and welcome to those who are wittingly or unwittingly serving Christ by serving the common good. Let's be salty. Let's embrace allies of different stripes. Salty souls keep their Godward focus. As you know, we were away for a week in St. John's, Newfoundland for our anniversary. We hiked the East Coastal Trail that hugged the rugged shoreline each day. The trails were rough, rocky, and often strewn with roots. It was tough going, and you had to keep focused. We even got neck aches by the end of the day for staring down hours and hours. We had to keep focused. Salty souls keep their focus on the Lord because they realize there are many, many occasions for stumbling. Jesus uses graphic language to shock us out of our complacency and into an awareness of the danger of stumbling and the seriousness of keeping on the spiritual path. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. This is grotesque, violent, 
not to be taken literally, and this clearly prophetic, rhetorical overstatement, which underscores the seriousness of keeping our focus on the Lord and upon our path. Love of money, love of our own pleasures, lust, envy, selfishness, pride, arrogance and prejudice, racism, God-forgetfulness, indifference to the needs of others, the list of potential stumblings is legion. But rather than focus on the many causes of our stumbling, let us instead focus on the path of discipleship. Last week we focused on Psalm 1 and the path of the righteous. Let us keep on this path and our souls will be salty. Salty souls are concerned for others' spiritual vitality. You know, our children and our grandchildren are experts at watching us. They see everything we do. They may not listen to everything we say, we think, but they certainly see everything we do. Are we known in our families for being people of faith? Is our practice of faith wisdom and a good witness? Or are there glaring discrepancies by, between what we say we believe and how we practice the faith? how we talk to others, how we treat others. Discrepancies between our talk and our walk create an opportunity for others to stumble. I remember as a very young Christian, decades before I became a priest, I was taken to task by a co-worker for, I'll say, my colorful language. She told me straight up, you call yourself a Christian and you talk like that? You ought to be ashamed, and I was. Instead of making smooth ground for others to see Christ at work in me, I had been a stumbling block. God bless her for helping me change. Rather than being a stumbling block for others, through prayer we are to be a conduit of divine grace and healing. The author of James commends the life of prayer to us in all kinds of circumstances. Are you suffering? Pray. And who is not suffering in some way in these pandemic times? Are you ill? Who among us doesn't know someone who could use our prayers for healing? Are you ill or know someone who is? Pray. Are you cheerful? Sing, sing a song of praise. It might go like this, and perhaps you know the chorus. You can join me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God's so good to me. You know verse 3? God answers prayer. God answers prayer. God answers prayer, he's so good to me. God answers prayer. Salty souls pray because prayer connects us to God and places us in God's presence. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes how we view life situations and can help bring others into the healing light. You could join us in our daily prayer devotional recordings. It's a way to help you keep salty. Salty souls are self-sacrificial. Salty souls are no strangers to the challenges that life as a disciple brings. Jesus says, for everyone will be salted with fire. This is a paradoxical saying. What does it mean that we will be salted with fire? Well, salt has flavoring and preservative qualities, and fire is, in the biblical context, referential to sacrifice and purgative suffering. Self-sacrifice for the gospel, self-sacrifice for the love of neighbor, self-sacrifice for our families, friends, and church. All of these, and many other examples of sacrifice, season our souls and forms good character for service. If you are not inconvenienced, 
bothered, put out, or irritated in some way as a consequence of being a Christian, you are probably far too comfortable in our culture and too inactive in ministry. St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Aren't there millions who are weeping now? If we are in solidarity, we might never stop weeping. Aren't there millions who are rejoicing now? If we are in solidarity, we might never stop our gleeful song. We are citizens of heaven, but this also makes us citizens of the world, and the people of the world are our family. Let us each enter in as we are able and according to our means. Let us enter into the life of the world and we will find self-sacrifice that makes us strong, that makes our hearts beat with God's love for the creation. Current, in formal use of the word salty, describes a person who is easily irritated or resentful of present circumstances. This is not at all what the Lord desires of us, but rather to be souls that embrace diverse allies for the common good, who keep their Godward focus and who care for the spiritual well-being of others. Salty souls are prayerful conduits of grace and are self-sacrificial in their life practice. Let's not be flavorless, unsalted saltines, rather let us be salty for the Lord in our discipleship. May the Lord be our helper. Amen. Friends, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed that found on your screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, let us gather our hearts for the prayers of the people. God of hope, hear our prayer. Thank you for the turn of the season. We appreciate the autumn air and the colors that are emerging from the trees. We know our lives are also a journey through seasons, and we thank you for walking with us, continually pointing to the hope that lies ahead. We pray for our world as the virus continues to spread, even more so the anger and divisiveness that is emerging through it. May the Holy Spirit bring unity and love to our communities as we attempt to move forward in safety and respect. God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for countries around the world that are not only suffering with COVID, but struggling through dangerous wars, political unrest, famines, and floods. We remember Haiti, Yemen, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Madagascar. We also pray for the unrest in Australia. God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for Canada, our government leaders, and for those newly elected serving in their ridings. We ask for wisdom and integrity as they make decisions for our promise, for our province, and country. We thank you for a successful vaccine and pray that our communities continue to be protected from the virus. 
God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our communities feeling burnt out by workplace stress, for our first responders, nurses, teachers, retail workers, and all those who are weighed down by the pressures produced by COVID. God of hope, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift to you our children who are experiencing the highest rate of mental health challenges than any other generation. We pray for their anxiety and fear. We pray against the negative effects of social media on their self-esteem. May they see themselves as you see them, loved and wonderfully made. Bless our youth programs at church, and may our youth grow deeper in their faith. God of hope, hear our prayer. We remember all those who are in need of healing today. Have mercy and hear our prayers for the sick. God of hope, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the Moon Festival today, we give you thanks that we can celebrate cross-culturally with our Mandarin brothers and sisters. Thank you for the hard work that Reverend Esther and her team have done in order to plan this wonderful event. God of hope, hear our prayer. And may we continue to be a light on the hill here at St. Philip's. Widen our reach into the community so that all may know that Jesus is the light of the world and has come to save us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table and into God's own presence. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Dear friends, Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us offer a sign of peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Our Lord teaches us that it is better to give than it is to receive. Thank you for all of you who live and experience that in your generosity. Let us pray over the gifts together. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ we behold your glory. Receive the offerings of your people gathered before you and open our hearts and mouths to praise your great salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Thank you, Father, for making us and your wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you through Jesus, your Son. Jesus lived as one of us. Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus is alive because you gave him life again. Jesus is with us now. So with the angels and everyone in heaven, we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we remember how God's compassion was expressed through Jesus. As he shared his last meal with his friend before his death, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and shared it among them with these words, This is my body broken for you. Eat and remember me. After the meal, he took the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it among them with these words, this is my blood poured out for you. Drink and remember me. And so we eat and drink and remember, and we will keep doing this until Jesus returns in glory. Therefore, we remember that Jesus is always with us. Send your Holy Spirit, 
gentle as a dove on us and on these gifts. Help us all to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honor and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us sing as we pray. many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us your peace. My friends, I take this communion in solidarity with you and on your behalf and encourage you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion, which recognizes that God is with us always, even to the end of the age, wherever we are. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Father in heaven, 
strengthen the unity of your church so that we who have been fed with holy things may fulfill your will in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier fall from heaven and rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.
Friends, thank you for joining us in worship today. I encourage you to consider coming to the cemetery service, which will be on Saturday, October the 2nd. And if you have names of deceased loved ones that you'd like us to remember, please send them in to Catherine at the office or give her a call and we'll make up a list and we'll be happy to pray for your departed loved one, whether you can make it to the service or not. And that will be at 1.30 on Saturday, October the 2nd. God bless you this week. Have a wonderful week in the presence of God.